Well, if I may start with long term first, um, in this case, um, we've got to reduce our reliance on the automobile for, um, to relieve congestion long term. And so there's no silver bullet. There's no one thing you do that accomplishes that. So, so there, there are a number of things. But the primary thing, in my view, has got to be a decent public transit system long term. Well, there are a couple on the books already that um, we need to get completed, and, and West Ashley is really in need of some improvements. The, the Highway 7 and 61 intersection already has a project in place. So does the, the main road and uh, Savannah Highway project. Um, unfortunately, I don't know the dollars that were available have provided the best solution, but at least it's, it's going to help. Um, I, I would say that even though the funding is not currently in place, similar to what recently occurred, replanning for Folly Road, they called it Rethink Folly Road, that we really need to do the same process for Savannah Highway and Sam Rittenberg, um, to the point that, um, as mayor, I would um, try to put some local funding in place, even through a tax increment finance district as I helped do when I worked for the city of Charleston on the Upper King Street improvements when we um, did the streetscape improvements on Upper King Street. During the 90s, I was uh, director of economic development for the city and was involved in that process of not only getting the funding, but planning and involving the neighborhoods and the property owners and then getting the project done. And a very similar, um, process and project, in my opinion, is needed for both um, Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and for Savannah Highway to make it more versatile and more attractive. And it would tie in to what I was telling you about earlier with uh, my strategic economic development for West Ashley in certain, certain neighborhoods. I do support, uh, I know this is contrary to some of the uh, league's membership. I do support the extension of, of the Mark Clark Expressway um, and I'd be certainly willing to look at um, improvements to, to Glenn McConnell. My daughter and son-in-law live at Shadow Moss um, and sometimes their commute just to get to the Mark Clark from their neighborhood which isn't but normally a five-minute ride when there's no traffic in the morning it can be over an hour. And, and so, you know, long term we need this public transit system to work, but you can't do it overnight and we don't have the federal funding for it yet. And so you've got to also do, you know, rational roadway improvements as well. And, and, and I got to tell you, I've been very disappointed this year with the legislature and um, our, our state government for not stepping up to the plate to, to provide uh, some additional funding, although they, I guess they did some incremental um, funding through the, 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 the leftover budget, but they didn't put a long-term plan in place to, to really meaningfully uh, fund highway improvements, and we, and we need that in this state. We need a bike share program, um, and, and the, the city tried it just on a, um, it was almost um, a not serious effort about 15 years ago and, and all the, the bikes got gone. <laughs> but um, I was in Paris last summer and they had these racks and, and I know they have them in other parts of, of our country as well, DC and some other places. And um, it's, it's a very good concept, particularly if it's tied in with our transit system to where, you know, where you have this juncture where you should be transferring, there's availability of bikes there, um, particularly with our, not just our visitors, but our residents as well can, can get from key places to the other with, 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 with bikes and have a, a pay-as-you-go credit um, um, on a time usage basis where, where bikes are available. I think it's a great idea. We should do it. I live West Ashley, just, just over the bridges in, in Old Windermere, and uh, occasionally I do ride my bike over the bridge, and it's, uh, it's a little bit like 
taking your life in your hands because it's 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 it doesn't seem to be safe. Uh, you don't hear about a lot of people getting hurt, but there are not a lot of riders really will, willing to take the risk because it it certainly um, is a risky venture. Um, so so it seems to me in the year 2015, you know, when and Wes Ashley was opened as a part of the city so many decades ago that there's not a safe way to walk or ride your bike from downtown to West Ashley just is, um, is a little mind boggling. Um, and, and we have to provide a safe way for that to occur. Um, you know, the, the proposal in, in play to, to take a lane of traffic out, um, you know, I would look to be as a, if, if that moves forward as a temporary one, because I, I don't particularly want to remove a lane of traffic. I mean, we got the congestion problem with automobiles as well. Um, but until we can get a new bridge or a safer way to, to make it happen, um, you know, it's something we got to look at. Uh, some folks have talked to me about doing it on on the memorial bridge next next door because there is a sidewalk on either side of that bridge and if you did away with the sidewalk on one side and added it to the width of the sidewalk you know on the other side you'd have about six feet which which i think would be wide enough so that's another option that that i do think we should look at but regardless we've got to do one or the other and, and have a safe way to walk and ride your bike from one major part of the city to another. Well, if I may start with long term first, um, in this case, um, we've got to reduce our reliance on the automobile for, um, to relieve congestion long term. And so there's no silver bullet, there's no one thing you do that accomplishes that so so there there are a number of things but the primary thing in my view has got to be a decent public transit system long term and, and we've got to lay the groundwork short term uh, to match what our long term plan is um, I'm don't know if I'd use the word uplifted but I'm encouraged by the I-26 alt study that's that the Council of Governments is doing and, and again I'll mention that this is a regional problem and not just for the city of Charleston. It's a very collaborative process that needs to occur with the city and other jurisdictions and with our citizens to, to make all this work long term. But as you probably know they're studying um, alternatives to that primary um, corridor being I-26. And, and I'm not sure the, the final recommendation, but I believe that it will be a bus rapid transit system or alternative uh, to what we already have now, which is basically just the automobile and, and the limited bus service through CARTA. So um, assuming that bus rapid transit system is, is the winner, so to speak, or the recommendation, then for the first time, uh, and our community gets a, a, around that idea and prices it out. For the first time, we'll actually have a real proposal that when the federal government has some money available, we'll have something we can apply for funds, you know, a, a real solid plan. And we need a solid plan uh, for public transit to move forward. The reason I like the bus rapid transit system is because it's versatile. You know, th there's Good idea of using an existing rail line or two, but because of our rivers and bridges, you know, we don't have rail lines going everywhere like we used to 100 years ago. They're mostly gone. Um, the bus rapid transit is, is flexible. And so you could have the spine of I-26 as one example, but also other spines coming from West Ashley and East Cooper to a few centralized transfer points you know, multimodal transfer points where you would be able to go from bus rapid transit to a local bus or to bike share or to, um, you know, a cab's cab or whatever alternatives are out there. Um, that's just got to be what we need to do long term to, to make this system work and to get away from this southern and national reliance that we have on our beloved 
automobile, which I like to drive too. But um, right now, for example, where I live, West Ashley, um, if I want to take the bus into town, there's about a two hour wait between the times that the buses go by. It's just not a viable alternative to, um, to, to drive in your car. Um, so once that spine system were in place, um, then you need the smaller CARTA system to, to really be uh, routed and timed appropriately so it's, you know, it really works for people. And that's the part that we can work on short term to go ahead and establish those main transfer points and the local routes and timing which will take an extra investment over what CARTA currently has. And then sometimes we'll downsize the buses that we're using, particularly on the peninsula. But, um, and it, it can be a system that, that still uses part of the old rail lines. For example, I really hope they're going to get this low line uh, agreement to where we have that right of way back from Norfolk Southern. And, and not just for bikes and pedestrians, but it would be wide enough that you could use it as a, um, you know, transit route for, for the bus rapid transit or for the local uh, bus connection. So tying all that together long term is, um, is, is the biggest part of the answer. Um, the other short term things, in, including getting the the, the local bus and transit system, CARTA system, adjusted for the long term is, um, you know, promoting other modes like walking and, and riding your bike. And the city's already been involved, which I would complete, of identifying those routes that, that bicyclists prefer and make sense, and then making them marked safely and appropriately so that, so we know this St. Philip Street, for example, might be one of those streets that, that we make it a bike corridor and, um, and, and do the necessary improvements to, to, to mark it and, and make it safe. 